On January 3rd, 2019, something called Bitcoin changed the entire world. Bitcoin made money sound again. Okay, they allowed for the true growth and prosperity of mankind through a non-controlled entity called Bitcoin decentralization, permissionless technology, peer-to-peer -peer technology. Bitcoin changed the entire planet. But then in July 30th, 2015, Ethereum or a smart contract platform promised to take the same exact technology and transfer it to every organized structure on planet Earth, which is much bigger than just money. Ethereum promised to put blockchain technology into the internet itself. Now, I believe this is even more significant than Bitcoin because right now, smart contracts alone own 30.5% of the entire market, just smart contracts. This is not including all the tokens created on the smart contracts themselves, which account for 61% of the entire market. Bitcoin's dominance is only at 39%. It's never been so low on a consistent basis. And I have made the claim over and over again that Bitcoin will never reach 50% dominance ever again. I believe that Bitcoin's decrease of issuance or the halving cycle that everybody talks about starts the market, but the utility narrative or Ethereum smart contracts layer ones, they end the cycles. And they are the reason, the biggest reason, 61% of the market, why cryptocurrency moves in general. So we have to focus our research efforts. We have to dive extremely deep, deeper than I ever have before into smart contracts. What I'm looking at is all of the major smart contracts right now. And I want to isolate the timeless principles of why they grew and why they got adoption and why they got liquidity and why they appreciated by more percentages than other coins. These are the questions I'm looking to solve in this video series. I'm going to be dissecting in great detail. Nobody has ever done this before on YouTube. Every single layer one and I will be showing you why they grow so we can help predict the future of cryptocurrency, make sound investments, and actually make money over time. I believe that smart contracts are the second biggest cycle. We have Bitcoin basically controlling the markets and then Ethereum is the second narrative. And we have to take this consideration because it has more growth potential. So I will be making a full video series. And this one, we're gonna be diving into Solana specifically. What can we learn from Solana? How does Solana get so much adoption? How is it the second or third biggest smart contract platform right now, today's date? And I found some interesting answers. Keep watching. What's going on everybody, Alex back with another video. Today we're gonna to be dissecting Solana on a level no other YouTuber has ever done before. I will make uh, scientific peer reviewed uh, papers after this uh, because of how detailed I'll be going. We're gonna have our own charts. This is gonna be an ongoing video series, something I have not finished and it will probably take me a very long time. So consider subscribing to the number one YouTube channel by quality of research on the internet. I got all of my experience in crypto. I do not have a traditional financial background, which has allowed me to unlock different research principles that most people are held back by. Um, and I have a unique way of diving into the market. We're looking at it from on-chain investigation. We're looking at it, of course, from price and technical analysis. We're looking at it from narrative investing and you know, just what people are thinking, the psychological uh, effects of cryptocurrency in the market. Of course, we're diving into you know, cycle trading. All these things that we do on our channel, I'm gonna be dissecting these layer ones and isolating variables. I have a theory of what I think uh, you know, gets adoption from layer one, and I'm gonna be backing up that theory with as much evidence and data as I possibly can. Um, and I'm going to reach out to people to see if I'm correct and take their you know, word of advice, and, and I'm looking for experts in the industry to invalidate this, because I do believe that this will set the standard similar to the stock to flow model and a decrease of issuance with Bitcoin's price, okay? The thing about Willy Boo Plan B, the stock to flow model works, right? It works obviously, but recently it's been getting invalidated. A lot of people have been criticizing, you know, the stock to flow model. And the reason for it is because all it's taking into consideration is the decrease of issuance, which is the having cycle, which is scarcity. It's only taking into consideration the scarcity element 
of cryptocurrency growth, but we know that scarcity is not the only reason crypto grows. Crypto grows with demand, right? So we have to try to map out with data how people think about demand. What are they gonna adopt next? Is it the metaverse? Is it NFTs? I have a lot of data in this video uh, that's gonna help you guys out with this journey. So definitely like the video and subscribe. So if I come over here, the first thing I wanna do is explain briefly, um, and this is something we created. Uh, it's just a visual of how I try to explain things to people. But basically, I wanna explain to you my, my framework of how I think about cryptocurrencies, because it's very important. Understanding the process and how you should you know, draw your own conclusions, et cetera, et cetera, is one of the most important things in crypto. Finding a crypto is better than blindly investing in a crypto. So basically, this is how my research usually goes. So I, I have a theory about the market. Um, this theory that I've been talking about with layer ones, uh, I've been saying in a lot of videos, but I wrote it down and I have a theory of why layer ones get adopted. And then what I do is I attack it, right? Make up a narrative with accuracy in mind, and then I back test the story. I look for data to invalidate or validate um, my theory. Now, I'm looking at it from not only data perspective, but I'm looking at it from a qualitative and quantitative analysis. And um, a lot of times, you know, attacking it from two different areas. And if you don't know what that means, just very briefly, um, you know, qualitative is like quality elements of, uh, you know, a project. For example, this could be one CEO versus another CEO. You can't really compare them, but you could tell that this CEO has more experience and he's younger and he's hungrier and he's better at marketing. And then this CEO is a developer CEO, whatever. You know, you can compare and contrast and relate it to the variables of how the market move. So what I've noticed is being that cryptocurrency is non, like people are not really using uh, you know, the tech, it's more about, um, you know, the perception of the usage. So right now people invest because they think people are going to adopt this utility. Um, I think that's more important, you know, in a CEO to have marketing, right? Because they can really, you know, spread their story and get that adoption, especially if you're really trying to get these uh, appreciating prices and percentages, you know, their ability to go viral is really, really important. So, um, you know, this is a qualitative element when comparing projects. A quantitative element would be like, something with numbers, right? Um, new addresses, all right, how many new addresses from this blockchain to this blockchain? How much TVL or total value lock does this blockchain get from this blockchain? So you have to attack it from both perspectives to get a real answer. A lot of times people are only attacking it from one perspective and this limits their research immensely because you can't even come up with the variables of quantitative analysis. Like there's sometimes people don't even know you know, what they should be measuring because they don't know the qualitative elements. And this is why I've always preached fundamental analysis, technical analysis, on-chain analysis, like everything. You have to attack it from different variables. Um, so what I do is I back test my theory. So we go theory one, I back test it from a 360 perspective, okay? Then I adjust it. So more times than not, you know, my theory is wrong. And then I'll go and uh, change the theory to what is more um, like what the data is telling me, okay? And then from there, I just back test it again. And I keep going through this cycle of rinse and repeating, right? And then eventually I have a very fine, um, you know, and well thought out theory. Um, and then usually I'll make a video about it or I'll make a investment decision into the coin. I just wanna explain that process to you guys and how it works because, you know, you have to do it for yourself. If you're not doing this process, if you're not doing at least you know, three to five different versions of the theory, you're not taking investments uh, serious and you're not learning anything. Um, so I do this and I will be doing this with this video series. Uh, and likely the reason why I could probably go deeper is because my first theory um, will be, you know, a little bit more accurate. I've been in cryptocurrency for six years. So as you can see in the top right of the page, you see the brain, right? The brain's there and you're limited up to your scope of knowledge. So I've always said this, education is the best investment of everything, of your time, money, everything. So eventually your first theory will get more accurate over time. If you do this enough and you rinse and repeat, you can run through much more theories way quicker and way deeper. Um, so this will help you in general. And then you'll see the growth trajectory of your portfolio go up with your experience. This is super important. You know, I, I made this graphic and I knew it was going to be really pivotal to a lot of people's success on this channel. Laying this out right here, a lot of people don't do that. So do me a favor, like the video, let's get this to as many people as possible. Let's educate them. But let's jump into what you guys are here for, which is an analysis on Solana. Okay. Obviously people are going to make investment decisions but this is not financial advice. And after researching, you know, my final theory is that Solana to me is not a good investment, but there's a lot of, um, a lot of gems in here uh, for future investments. So basically 
my final refined theory is this right here. We have this, um, you know, breakout, uh, this dump and breakout and then kind of sideways action. It's not really dumps, it's sideways action. Now, if we look at this chart, what we're doing is we're comparing Solana to Ethereum. And the reason why this is super important is because, you know, Solana has these times where it outcompetes the market. And that's the only reason I would ever invest in a layer one is if it outcompetes Ethereum. Because right now, Ethereum is by far the safest layer one to invest your money. It's the biggest. So the only reason I would ever try to invest in anything else is to outcompete ETH. So what we're doing here is this chart is showing ETH versus Solana. If the chart goes up, Solana is doing better. So I want to know, you know, about the times when Solana did better and what were the catalysts at that time. Um, and that will get us our answer. So this is my theory here. In this time here, around uh, January 6th, January 7th, the reason why Solana outcompeted Ethereum is because of the general altcoin market. I was calling this back in the day. I was saying, hey, you know, altcoins were going to take dominance over Bitcoin. And when we have these big altcoin cycles, the market gets adopted for no reason, basically. The market just gets adopted, um, you know, and the ones with smaller market caps that have more upside potential will be Ethereum by percentage gains. So not all the time do every coin, you know, on the market beats Ethereum, but if it's relatively good, it will outcompete it by percentages. So I looked very deep and I was looking for a specific catalyst in Solana, like maybe there was a hype news event from Solana or something, and I couldn't really find anything, to be honest. If we look it up, you know, from a qualitative analysis or from news, you can see January 4th, 2021 to January 10th, 21, which is the same time that we have this massive breakout here, right? Look at the time, January 7th. I'm looking for a specific news event and there was nothing. There was, there was nothing at all. It was just regular news in the market, nothing that stood out. There was no product launch. There was nothing. So I looked a little bit deeper and I came to the conclusion it's because Ethereum broke out. So if we look at that exact same time, and this chart right here, it's the top 100 altcoins versus Bitcoin dominance. You can see that this exact time right here. So January 3rd, we have this bounce with all the altcoins going pretty hard. Um, and, you know, this basically started this prolonged, you know, altcoin cycle, as you can see there. So I, you know, came to the conclusion uh, with my first theory that, and this is Ethereum in the same. So we're looking at Ethereum versus USD. I've come to the conclusion that basically Ethereum moved first, right? Look, January 1st, or January 3rd, you could say January 1st, whatever, we have this uh, big parabolic rally here. Then we see all coins move. All coins come a little bit, or around the same time, because this is an index of all of them, so it makes sense. Around the same time, we see that move. And then Solana moves, right? You see January 9th, January 7th, Solana came after. So this is a common narrative that I know is a confirmed narrative in crypto. What happens is, we get a lot of hype around, you know, altcoin season when all these altcoins are going crazy and people are looking and calculating the percentages and people are like, wow, there's so much money being made. What do they think? What's the first thing they think? Well, what's the next best thing? That's all they think. And it's pure hype. It's not real utility. This is why you see Solana destroying Ethereum by massive percentages. Look at this. It beat Ethereum by almost 12x, 11, 12x, right? And the reason for that is because people are just asking the question, what's the next best thing, right? That's what they're doing. And Solana at the time was a, just a more undervalued layer one. And this is why I've told you guys, these layer ones will do well no matter what, right? Most of them, not all of them, but most of them will appreciate in price as long as they're all coin season. The question is, is if it's going to do better, you know, over a long period of time, like, like it's, it's beat Ethereum a lot. And, the, you know, it's going to be hard for me to say that it will continue to beat Ethereum if we don't see anything specific. So... The first breakout was definitely because of other market conditions. It was because of Ethereum. It was because of all altcoins doing, you know, generally well. Um, now we have this kind of sideways action um, where it wasn't really losing to Ethereum. It was going sideways, right? It was kind of staying with the market. And this is another market situation where Bitcoin basically destroyed everything. It destroyed everything. So if I just duplicate this chart here, and we pull up Bitcoin's price, we can see that that was around the top. You guys remember, everybody remembers, right? It'll be in our head forever. May 10th, 2021, 
uh, destroyed uh, everything. So this was just another mark condition. It was Bitcoin moving the market, as you can see here, April. So you could just see that Solana started dying before Bitcoin and then Bitcoin just came in April, May, beginning of May, destroyed everything, right? And that's why you see it sideways because Ethereum and Solana did bad at the same time, right? So that's why you see the sideways here. Now, this is where it gets really interesting. And I think this is where um, the most of this video is going to come to fruition. I think um, it's the most important part. And, and this is you know going to add to this uh, original theory of my layer ones and why layer ones get adopted is because of this right here. Most important thing, Solana captured the NFT trend. So if you look at NFTs and we're going to dive into some data, okay, and I just want to show you a couple of things, right? So basically what happened with Solana and why it started doing so well in comparison to Ethereum are two things. First, they had the integration. So first, the tech, right? The tech was working and they came out with Wormhole, which is a token bridge. And this was before the trend started. So it was like warming up the trend, as you can see here, August 9th. And then if we pull up the original chart, you can see it was like, yeah, right here. It was like the precursor. So if we scroll in a little bit, we had the precursor around the 9th, 10th. And then it went parabolic, right? So if we look at these events, you know, uh, around that time, it was first the wallets, right? It was August 9th, 2021, of them allowing transfers from multiple blockchains onto Solana. So they made the integration so people can actually do it. And then it was the hype. I want to show you some data behind the, the token transfer. For some reason, guys, and I've said this in multiple videos, Solana has horrible on-chain metrics. So we are so early with our strategy that unfortunately you cannot get on-chain metrics for every single protocol. I think the biggest ones get them. I don't know why Solana is doing it. It's the only blockchains where you cannot get accurate um, you know, on-chain metrics and historical data. So I had to find a workaround. So what we're looking at here is the actual contract on the Ethereum blockchain of the token bridge. Um, so you can see that there's a couple spikes, right? There's one towards the August 16th right here. You see it? And this is basically people just interacting with the bridge, right? So the bridge comes out, they're allowed to use the bridge now, they have like an access point to Solana, right, from Ethereum. And now, if you look at August 15th, we see the spike in transactions. So that made me suspicious and I started looking. So all I did was Google search around there, August 5th to August 17th, Solana, the search term, and you could see a couple of things, uh, but I really identified this right here. Um, NFTs. So around this time, we had a big NFT boom in general, not specific to Solana, but in general, we had all types of NFTs just doing so well. This is when, um, you know, CryptoPunks started doing well. Um, so again, people were saying, oh, we have this confirmed NFT trend, you know, what's next, right? What's, what's the next best thing? So they're like, Solana's smart and they actually, you know, launched something called Degenerate Apes. Literally, causing the price of Solana to go up like crazy and bringing a lot of awareness and attention. Um, this was actually uh, the reason why they got it. If we look over here to the price, you can see that literally August 15th here, when we have these big spikes, you can see literally right here, August 16th, 2021, Degenerate Ape sells for 1.1 million. And then we have this influx of people. So they captured the NFT trend. It's that simple. Look right here, the exact date, August 15th. People start going onto Solana. If we look at the on-chain metrics, literally spike August 15th. People start bridging over to Solana August 15th. If we look at the price, price starts going up August 15th, right? Um, even I think if we look at the search term, August 15th, right? Ethereum, and this adds to my last fact when I was saying that Ethereum moved the market originally in January, the first you know, move right here. This is adding to the fact you can see the search term. Ethereum search term is going up first around the same time, literally November, December, January, right? January, we see the Ethereum spike. Ethereum moves all layer one altcoins. And then we see the only spike literally in uh, search volume around August 15th. It's not guaranteed, but you could see that it's pretty obvious, right? It's super obvious that it was the NFT trend. Okay, it was definitely the degenerative apes that made the price of Solana increase in value. And 
at the time, it was an NFT trend in general. Ethereum was getting all types of adoption because of NFTs. So I explained in the beginning, you know, briefly qualitative elements, you know, marketing going viral. They literally did exactly what they were supposed to do. Um, they captured the NFT trend. Um, you know, it wasn't about cheap transactions or fast speeds. It wasn't about some technical analysis indicator. It was actually about them doing the right thing at the right time. Like they literally timed it perfect, launched this, got all this adoption and the price outcompeted Ethereum by large, huge, look, look how parabolic that looks, right? I know people are getting lost, but let's just go over it one more time, right? The first time it was a general market, we can't really isolate variables. Ethereum does well, everything does well. So it's hard to say, you know, uh, we could use that again in this other layer one. But this second piece of information that we just got was Solana captured the NFT trend. So I could say, you know, the next layer one that is most likely to capture a current trend will win. You guys see where I'm going here? So if you're looking at a layer one and they don't have the means to capture it, if they don't have a bridge, if they don't have a working product, or they don't have, you know, uh, the team to pull off the marketing or the team to recognize, you know, that we need to hit this trend at the right time, then I, you know, I personally want to invest in it. It's as simple as that. Now it gets a little bit crazier and we can use this for the future. If you look at nonfungible.com, okay, there's a couple of different, I guess you could say uh, little narratives, uh, you know, that have been recently coming up. I call them micro narratives. So the big narrative is definitely the NFTs in general. And the one that got the most adoption is the collections. So as you can see here, I usually look at sales uh, USD. Let's look at it from all time. You can see that the collectibles definitely got the most adoption. People buy NFTs so they can collect over a long period of time and make money. That's the answer for sure. But if we look at a couple of others, you can see art uh, got a pretty good amount too. It's got about 2.1 billion sales USD. If you look at gaming, about the same. 2.5. If you look at Metaverse, you can see that they're they're up and coming. This is like the new trend, right? So we have 2.5 billion and then we have 672 million, okay? Um, but by far collectible, okay? So these are the trends that have basically been moving the market, um, you know, in recent history when it comes to the utility narrative. Like I said in the beginning, again, you know, the scarcity element of Bitcoin is great, but this is moving the market right now, for sure. People adopting NFTs, and increasing the demand element, right? The demand element is just as important as the scarcity element. You know, scarcity doesn't work if demand's not there, but the increase in demand allows uh, the whole entire market to continue. And we're trying to predict the, the future. And I personally believe off of all of my research, that's probably gonna be the metaverse. And you can see it here because it's still undervalued in comparison to game and art, um, but the beauty is that on the metaverse, you can have all of the elements at one. You could have gaming metaverse. You can have art in the metaverse. You can have collectibles. I mean, that's probably the only place uh, where they can see the collectibles and see the art is in the metaverse. So metaverse kind of encapsulates all of them in one, if that makes sense. And it actually gives value to all of them more and more. So if we're looking at other layer ones, what I want to see is I want to see a layer one that can capture the metaverse the best, okay? So that's the first trend is, is meta, wherever metaverse collectibles um, and, and gaming meet is the layer one I want to adopt, okay? So that's super important um, and that's something I drew from this video and some, some of this data. Um, but there's something that's coming out, right? So remember with Solana, you know, before it actually took off, we had this bridge get created, okay? So they're actually one of the first bridges to actually work. Um, there's a couple of them that worked, but they were the ones that actually got adoption. So they had this bridge and it was almost like they needed the technology first and then they captured the narrative. So this is important for the narrative to be captured. We need to have this precursor of the tech being readily available and working and easy to use. These things are very important. So I believe the next tech, because everybody has bridges now, the bridge thing is over, but the next tech is definitely by far layer two tech. And the reason I say this is because in the metaverse, in gaming, we need to have the fast transaction uh, speeds and a cheap cost. So it can't be on an expensive layer one, but I know what you're saying. Oh, but Solana's cheap. Yes, this is true. But most of liquidity in TVL is in Polygon, okay? So the big question is, would it be easier for people to move to this layer two with ZK rollups, uh, ZSARC technology, which is a superior form of tech, 
and keep all the network effects of Ethereum because Polygon specifically is just like easy to use, right? You guys know, most of you use Polygon or Matic network. It's just right connected to Ethereum. It feels like Ethereum. Um, you know, the, the interface is like geared towards Ethereum. Like they're connected with Ethereum, all the liquidity. So that's another part of layer ones that I think is part of my theory. And I think it's gonna become more and more right as I get more data is the easier it is to transfer from Ethereum to the layer one, the better it is for sure. Um, and before we, we had layer two tech with optimism, but I think people were more excited about uh, Solana because of, uh, you know, that it's a different blockchain and it has its own unique uh, signature trilemma. Um, but I think, uh, you know, Polygon is getting more adoption because of the ease of, of, of compatibility with developers, um, you know, all different types of people. It's super easy for developers and retail to get into Polygon or a layer two. Now, I have data to back this up, right? I'm not just saying this, I'm giving you the precursor and then I'm gonna show you what I'm talking about. So if we look at this chart, we're looking at Matic versus Solana. You could see that we are on an uptrend, meaning we're looking at just the price. I know this is not everything, but I'm gonna back it up with more data. This is from a price perspective. So when this chart goes up, Matic is beating Solana. And when this chart goes down, Solana is being Matic, okay? Notice one thing, in general, this is an uptrend. Now in recent history, we are actually on a pretty aggressive uptrend here. Now, notice at the top here, right? We have this far, like Solana was winning all of this, right? And this is actually when they came out with their bridge and you know the degenerative apes and the NFTs and them capturing the, the collection, but that came out to a halt. And now we see Matic getting more adopted. It's because I think, of ZSnark technology before they were on optimism and now there's a lot of hype and everybody's excited about uh, you know ZK rollups. Everybody is excited about ZK rollups and I think they're more excited about this tech, which is usually the precursor, right? So it looks like, I, I'm telling you guys the answers right now. I've been saying this for a while and this is bold predictions and there's a lot of elements that I am you know speculating on. I agree, but this is what I do for a living. And I'm telling you right now that it's easier and everybody's excited about ZK rollup technology and they want the easy Ethereum interface that every, it's not easy, but everybody's already using it, right? All the liquidity, all the network effects, all the developers want it to be easy. And they're more likely to go to a layer two than they are to, you know, go all the way to Solana or go all the way to Cardano. So, you know, what I'm bringing into question here in my theory is, are we gonna get adoption of layer twos instead of layer ones? Is the layer one trend dead? Um, are they gonna move towards layer twos and, and you know that be the big percentage increase? Now, if we look at this chart, we look a, bit, a little bit further. We just looked at the last one. If we look at this one, we have Binance plus Solana versus Loopring, which is a, a layer two uh, ZK rollup tech, and obviously Matic, which is like they're moving into layer two ZK rollups. So we're basically comparing, if this chart goes up, layer ones are winning. If this chart goes down, layer twos are winning. You see we are on a, a consistent downtrend. So it looks like people are adopting layer twos at a more rapid rate than layer ones. And we see the same thing happening here when we only compare Matic versus Solana. So Matic signifies it going up. We are on an uptrend right now. It's likely that layer twos will get adopted more than layer one. So I'm just adding this into the mix uh, with data. And then I wanna show you a little bit more. Um, if we look at BNB versus Matic, uh, you can see that BNB uh, is losing versus Matic over a long period of time, which BNB is the biggest layer one right now. Uh, BNB is losing to Matic. Matic is destroying BNB. Um, and this is a general downtrend. So this is adding a little bit to the case. I'm trying to predict the tech in the future too. So we predicted the trend. It's probably gonna be metaverse. Um, you know, Whatever layer one or layer two adopts the metaverse will get the adoption, right? Um, now, if we look at TVL, you can see that uh, there is an undervalued opportunity because there's only 5.54 billion on Polygon. But if you look at Binance Smart Chain, they have about 16.27 billion. So I do think that this TVL would drop in comparison to Polygons uh, over a long period of time. Now, if we look at it from on-chain metrics, same thing. Active Binance uh, Smart Chain addresses are on a downtrend. So not as many people are using Binance Smart Chain and probably because of all the scams and the centralization probably. Um, and if we look at, you know, Polygon, it looks like it's on a side and, and this is with the market going down in current history. So when I when they get the adoption of uh, ZK rollups and when people start using it more, I do think that this is going to go up, okay? Um, and if we look at the numbers too, it's just more undervalued. Polygon's more undervalued. Layer two tech is more undervalued. Um, it's just looking a little bit stronger right now. Um, and we can see the same thing 
with unique addresses. So we see this kind of sideways uh, linear growth. Uh, if we look at, you know, this is like straight up Polygon and layer two tech guys. So in general, uh, just to, you know, wrap up this video, I know it was a lot, it's a lot of research. Uh, I'm gonna get written versions of everything after I go through every layer one and come up with my master theory. I'm definitely gonna get it uh, reviewed uh, by, you know, experts in my industry. Um, and really put out something that we can use forever uh, that will isolate timeless principles of why, you know, layer ones get adopted and, you know, so we can, you know, predict it in the future. So um, just to wrap it up one more time for you guys, very simply put, you know, Solana had some good historic events. Um, the first one was the altcoin season. Then it stopped out, you know, Bitcoin destroyed everything, you know, and it kind of moved sideways. And then the second big trend um, is Solana, and their ability to come out with the bridge tech and capturing that NFT trend really nicely um, was why they outcompeted Ethereum, not because of price or not anything else. Um, now, how the future is going to change is the trend is definitely going to change. It's not going to be about NFTs because NFTs are already pretty big. It's probably going to be about the metaverse because the metaverse encapsulates all of them. Um, but the weird part is that layer twos look like they're coming on the rise and it will probably take more adoption than layer ones. So pay attention. I said this on my Twitter. Definitely go follow me on Twitter. I said it first. Um, I do think wherever layer two tech, um, ZK rollup, wherever the ease of use, wherever, you know, captures the trend the best. And we saw a lot of big, the biggest projects are integrating with Polygon, okay, is where the next gold rush is going to be and the best percentages will come from the specific category. And I'm pulling this from data. I'm pulling this from previous history. Obviously, it's speculation, but I do this for a living. If you like the quality of this content, hit like. If you don't, leave some constructive criticism. Subscribe for more video updates. And like I always say, if you don't get with it, you will get left behind. Guys, this is a video you watch back. I know it's very complicated, but it's very hard to explain these very complex uh, you know, subjects in a simple way. So watching the video a couple times, you know, uh, talking about it with a friend is going to probably be very productive and definitely take notes. But yeah, catch you guys in the next video. Thanks for watching.